developer that will break China's back. We'll get to you for, uh, later on that, Shuli. But Christy, I'll start with you. Highlight some of the risks, really, that China Wonka is facing right now. Right. So the ratings downgrade only add to a list of warning signs that Fanky is already facing. You know, we have seen how Fanky has been in talks for debt extension with insurers. And then it also sold a mall in Shanghai to Lingri at 26% discount. And in addition to that, since late last year, we have repeatedly warned about how Fanky has been scaling back its land acquisition. And that's a canary in the coal mine for any Chinese developers. And I think what we worry about the most here is faltering confidence. If lenders stop doing refinancing, if home buyers avoid Fanky's pre-sold projects, there you go the downward spiral in its liquidity. And we are, mm. you know, worried about a potential self-fulfilling prophecy right here. And, and you've been writing, Shuli, about it's been, you know, a third year into the property downturn. It seems like China is still using these, you know, market-oriented solutions to deal with these woes that we're seeing in property. Is it time for a new strategy? I, I absolutely think so. I mean, so far, the Chinese government, they, they like to bury their head in the sand. But uh, it has become clear that the market forces have become toxic. Just like what just Christy just mentioned, right? Like uh, there is a, a uh, not even 600 million US dollar uh, offshore syndicated loan. Two of the three Chinese state-owned banks, they are not willing to extend this loan. That just shows that even in China's state-owned financial system, the biggest financial institutions, they're saying these developers are not safe whatsoever, and we just don't want to help them at all about housing to them. Should we expect some sort of bailout from China then? So late last year, Shenzhen Metro, the major shareholder, has pledged to support for Fanky via potential purchases of its projects or bonds, but we think that's far from sufficient. You know, contractor sales is down an estimated 43% in the first two months of just this year alone. And we're expecting, you know, a consistent gap in its cash flow if the sales downturn persists. Mm. And I think in the bigger picture, China would definitely want to avoid another blow to confidence from Fanky's debt trouble. But we're two and a half years into the crisis. And, you know, we have, haven't seen the government bailing out any particular Chinese developers. And I think so far there's no clear evidence as to why Thank You should be an exception. Uh, Julie, maybe then chime in on this, right? We, we saw China really resist bailing out Evergrande, resist bailing out Country Garden. Do you think that, you know, if they actually support Wonka because of the state ties, is that, is that actually good or bad for the market? I think it would be really good for market, and it would be good for the Chinese government own books. I mean, uh, land sales account for, on average, one third of uh, local government uh, fiscal income, and from its 2021 year high, the land sales revenue has come down by one third. And according to the budget report last week at the National People's Congress, the Chinese government is expecting flat land sales this year. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look like that's a realistic expectation. And uh, going by the first two months of contracted sales, like what Christy just mentioned, uh, we could be seeing more contraction this year than last year. So the, the local government, they, they will be even more short on money. So I think a bailout to steady the, the overall market confidence is for China's own good. And, and the debt troubles that you talk at Wonka, I mean, we had Charlie Chu saying it's actually, the implications are maybe even bigger than what we saw with Country Garden, than what we saw in Evergrande because of those state links. Why do you think that's significant? Right. I think Vanky is known to be the most conservative major developer. You know, back during the housing boom, it focused on maintaining just two to three years of land bank when peers are in a land bank frenzy, accumulated, you know, up to five to six years of land bank. And then you have, you know, Vanky's management. Actually, back in 2018, it already talked about its goal is to survive. That's during the peak of the housing boom. And you can see how, you know, China, this is showing you the depth of China's housing downturn that's now enveloping also the most significant or most conservative players in the sector. Well, lay it out for us then. I mean, if, if it does default, what, what, what could happen? <laughs> I mean, it, it's a rewind of Deng Xiaoping's uh, sudden tour, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wang He was, uh, was uh, highly intertwined with the rise of Shenzhen. It went public on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange in 1991. And uh, it, it symbolizes the, uh, the, the notion of uh, private home ownership in China, right? Wang He is not China Evergrande or Country Garden. They're the newer kids in town. Mm -hmm. And if this symbolic name uh, falters, I mean, it 
it's breaking with 30 years of tradition in China.